Acceleron Learning, life experience accelerated. On deck right now, legal basics and employment law. Great to have you with us. I'm Amanda Maisie. This unit will discuss the legal rights of workers and employers. Federal employment laws provide both the applicants and employees certain protections from unfair treatment and discriminatory actions of the employer. The protections encompass hiring and termination practices, discrimination, wages, and benefits. Federal regulations also protect the activities of unions, guarantee a standard of workplace safety, and offer protection for whistleblowers. Prior to the enactment of these laws, workers in the U.S. had very few rights. Around the turn of the 20th century, a number of high-profile incidents prompted the government to take action to protect workers. Pre-industrial laborers face risks from animals, hand tools, ladders, and stairs. Industrialization substituted steam engines for animals, machines for hand tools, and elevators for ladders. But whether these new technologies generally worsen the dangers of work is unclear. What is clear is that nowhere was the new work associated with the Industrial Revolution more dangerous than right here in America. While workers were injured on the job or their heirs were suing employers for damages, winning proved difficult. Where employers could show that the worker had assumed the risk, had been injured by the actions of a fellow employee, or had himself been partly at fault, courts would usually deny liability. A number of surveys taken around the year 1900 showed that only about half of all workers who were fatally injured recovered anything and their average compensation only amounted to about a half a year's pay. Because accidents were so cheap, American industrial methods developed with little reference to their safety. Public reaction to numerous industrial incidents in the early 20th century led to changes in government regulation of labor. Before we discuss the legal aspects of termination, you should know about a concept called at-will employment. This is a doctrine that defines an employment relationship in which either party can break the relationship with no liability. With at-will employment, the employer is free to discharge individuals for good cause or bad cause or no cause at all, and the employee is equally free to quit, strike, or otherwise cease work. At-will employment applies in most states where there was no express contract for a definite term of employment. It also does not apply if the employee belongs to a labor union. Next, you should know about wrongful termination. Being terminated for any of the items listed below may constitute wrongful termination. Number one, discrimination. The employer cannot terminate employment because the employee is a certain race, nationality, religion, sex, age, or in some states, sexual orientation. Number two, retaliation. An employer cannot fire an employee because the employee filed a claim of discrimination or is participating in an investigation for discrimination. This retaliation is forbidden under civil rights law. Number three, employee's refusal to commit an illegal act. An employer is not permitted to fire an employee because the employee refuses to commit an act that is illegal. Number four, an employer not following own termination procedures. Often, the employee handbook or company policy outlines a procedure that must be followed before an employee is terminated. If the employer fires an employee without following this procedure, the employee may have a claim for wrongful termination. Now let's talk about termination. If you are ever terminated from a job, you may be eligible for unemployment compensation. Benefits are provided to workers whose jobs have been terminated through no fault of their own. To receive benefits, you must be willing and available to work at a new job. Benefits are paid jointly through a federal and state partnership but are administered by each state individually. Benefits may be paid for up to 26 weeks and may be extended during periods of high unemployment for an additional 13 weeks. Should you need to file a claim, you can contact your state unemployment insurance agency using the website servicelocator.org. 